If you're cruising along the Mother Road, Route 66, you'll go through Flagstaff, Arizona. You can play some pretty great disc golf. It's the 2023 PDGA Masters Disc Golf World Championships. Grant Zellner alongside Philo Brathwaite with back nine coverage of round number two in the MP40 division. This group motoring through the course at Thorpe Park. Michael Johansson, Kayla LaVisca, Steve Rico, and Dave Feldberg started the day in the lead. All of them still at or near the top of the leaderboard. These are the scores as they stood when this card made its turn to the back nine. Philo the 10th, a long par three at 427 feet. Yeah, this one's playing down the hill. We remember just a couple of holes ago, they had that hole that was playing under 400 feet up the hill. That was a par four, now playing back down the grade. Gravity should help make that distance. Kale Visca first on the box. Narrow little gap there, Kale, clean so far. Wow, what a shot from Kale Visca. Staying clean with all those trees. Another tight swing there from David Felberg. Look at that line. Going to finish a little off to the left, but man, those trees he's missing right in the middle of the fairway. So impressive. Michael Joe. Beautifully yeah. done. Absolutely. Bring that in stage right. Love it. Appears there might be just a little bit of OB here. We haven't seen a lot of that, but just a little bit at the right near the basket. Rico off the mark, off the tee shot, going back to the sidearm play into the green. Job done there, stress-free par coming up for Mr. Rico. Michael Joe trying to elevate her up and over. Feldberg, lay up all the no way. part of that, yeah. <laughs> didn't, didn't want any part of that. <laughs> Kayla Visca, is he going to get cheeky with this? Yeah, he's got a line around the outside. Try to stall it in there, it looks like. Oh, -hoo. bounces it off the pole. He's so close. I think if they dig this hole, he's so close. Like, he missed it, but hit the basket and trickle a little bit. Well, I think you could easily make this OB correct on both of them. Play this one, play the one. Par frame here on the 10th. No strokes exchanged. No time to explain when all your little ants go marching. On to the 11th, 272 foot par 3. Again, downhill. Dave Matthews for you there, huh? <laughs> No, no strokes exchanged, isn't that the? Oh. We've got That's Kale LaVisca. <laughs> He's airborne. Hoping to catch something late. Does not for Kale. Blows past the basket. A little uphill putt. You can see the severity of the slope here. Super downhill. Over going to the Heiser flip play. Looks like he's right off circle one. Michael Joe, same flavor. Oh, this is looking lovely, but carrying too much. Oh, there you go. Late tree saves the day for Michael Joe. Circle's edge putt for him back up the grade. Steve Rico now needs this to get down. All right. It does, but a bit long. You see the whisker for circle one there for David Felberg. Just beyond. Oh, that's a touchy little putt there from a knee for Felberg. You know he loves that. Blackie showing, doing work. Showing off the artistry right there. All spin and touch. Okay, LaVisca now. Little right to left wind should lift the disc. Man, putting is so difficult up at elevation. You really got to jam the disc into the line. <laughs> you can't really just float them out there. And unfortunately, that's kind of what happens at elevation. Things just kind of sail off on you. You give them too much air. 
Michael Johansson takes advantage and for the moment is all alone out in front. Oh, what? no. Uncharacteristic miss from deep in circle one there for Mr. LaVisca. That's definitely going to sting. This hole just 272 feet, but played to an over par average for the field. So we move away to the 12th, 402 feet. Another short par four. Yes, sir. Obviously, there you go. Got another very defined fairway. Got to keep it in the middle from the seams of it. The looks of things. Bellberg on the box. Got over on that one a bit much. Hoping for some ground play. Get some back into the middle. I guess a play like that really doesn't hurt you too much. You know, it's only 400 feet. Say you split the hole in half, a couple 200-foot shots, get yourself up there for a birdie look. <laughs> doesn't take much. Beautiful swing there from Michael Johansson. Disc never left the middle of the fairway. Steve Rico now throwing straight into the sun. Another solid play there. Great anticipation, understanding the gravity is going to stable out the disc. Good angle and snap power there. Kayla Visca gets a little higher into the window. This is a very aggressive play. Love to see it. That should be a little chip shot up and down. Potentially even a little soft bid for an eagle. Rico throws that hard. Oh, he tugged that one out the hand to the left. There you go, Felberg using the ground play, throw it into the face of the hill. Kills all the speed just under the basket. Stand still up for Michael Johansson. There you go, about pin high for Michael Joe. Well within circle one. As expected, Kayla Visca lined up perfectly center fairway, takes a soft bit at it, ensuring the birdie. Rico from distance, just a little shy. Formality putts for the rest of the crew. Felberg, the car to birdie. This hole, one of the four or five easiest relative to par on the course. Well, you can see why. Pretty generous fairway there. Short distance, just over 400 feet. Plenty of room to work a disc into the middle of the fairway. Nice little chip shot, get you up and down for a birdie. Got to take advantage of a hole like that. Unfortunate for Mr. Steve Rico there to come up empty handed. That sidearm play got away from him there on the approach. He's still smiling, having a good time. Love with confidence. One of the easiest holes on the course to the hardest, at least for day number two, 496 foot par three. Yeah, this is a tough one, Grant. See that downhill grade, definitely gonna help with the distance. It's such a tight line. And the fence is a little bit of an oddity. True story, not very often you're gonna see a fence or two of them in the middle of your fairway. Elberg clipping something early have some work to do to get up and down. Michael Joe Hansen, though, I look like at this. this play. Wow. Double S turn, runs it a bit long. Just keep going. <laughs> I imagine you'd rather be a little long on this hold than short. A little easier to control your speed back up the hill for an approach than down the hill. OK, 
Kale never flipped that one. Nope, He's catching some trees as well. Between the fences, now Steve Rico. Oh, this is looking nice, Grant. What a shot from Steve Rico. Never left center of the fairway, tracking chains almost the entire way. Got the cameraman to spin around. <laughs> He's going to have a birdie putt. Beldy trying to get up and down to save the par. Oof. Back to back ninja branches for Felberg. <laughs> Can't have that. Now he really needs to get up and down and salvage this bogey. That gets into the ground, checks up about pin high for Feldberg. Maybe circle's edge, just inside. See LaVisca, a little work to do yet. Yeah, he does, downhill putt, looking right around that 27, 30 foot mark. After running it a bit long, Michael Johansson takes a stab and comes up dry. Now here's Feldberg trying to salvage that bogey tourniquet putt. Got it. It's okay to give up one stroke, hard to give up two. Solid putt as well for Kayla Visca. Grabbing that par. Kale just kind of hovering in place right now. Sure does seem like it, doesn't it? As well as Steve Rico just kind of hanging out there, just having a hard time getting something going. Usually wants the seal breaks for those guys. They really start to let them loose, man, and the birdies start coming in bunches. Just 258 feet, the shortest hole on the course. Once again, very defined middle fairway. There's not a whole lot of room out to the left and to the right on these holes out here at Thorpe. Got to have a shot that stays in the middle the whole time. Michael Johansson, one of the best I've ever seen at doing just that. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, gives him an opportunity. Dr. Smooth on the box, letting it fly. There you go. Beautiful straight shot. Rico's had a case of the pulls a little bit today. Can't shake yeah, it. Had a bit of Shankenstein in his coffee this morning. He's got to <laughs> find a way to fix that before he comes out for round three, that's for sure. And Grant goes to his notebook to write down Shankenstein. <laughs> We've got Steve Rico trying to get up and down and save another par. Mm, that was a fortunate little kick there to get him about it, back out into the open. It would have to look like this. Felberg trying to get up and down for birdie. Solid effort there. There's a Steve Rico step through putt. Big time par save there from the SoCal beast. And Steve has the longevity and the experience to know it's a long tournament. You're going to overcome your, your slow start here on day number two. You got lots of golf you have to play. All of these competitors, man, you look down the leaderboard up into the top 15, 20 names, and there's so many guys that were the, the heart of the national tour for a number of years before the Disc Golf Pro Tour even came around. You know, you're talking about, you know, major winners and David Felberg and Steve Rico right there in the mix so many times. Kayla Visca in the mix so many times. Josh Anton in the mix so many times. I mean, there's so many names that you're looking up on this board and saying, man, these guys were, they were the tour. They, they were the heartbeat and the guys that were really laying the, fo the foundation for what we're seeing today. I mean, obviously along with Ken Climo and Barry Schultz, but they were the guys chasing those guys. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Old 15, 311 foot par three. Sort of a side hill situation here at the 15. Yeah, it should be very receptive to the disc. Punch it all the way up there to the basket. Should hit and quit pretty quick, pretty nicely. 
Kind of like that? Something like that, yeah. Just a hair short on the speed there for Michael Joe, but below the basket inside circle one, Kayla Visca disc away. There you go. It's a Steve Rico, airborne. Steve-O could use a solid finish right about now. It's been a roller coaster of a day for him. There's a really good opportunity to car to birdie. Felberg, can he follow that up? A little bit of a wind jump and bounce there, but bounces right on circle's edge and just below the basket for Felberg. Michael Joe holding that follow through. Man, I love the way that that man puts. So confident, the same stroke practically every time. Oh, ho, ho, Dave. That was a vicious spit out there for Felberg. Looked like that was 90% of the way in. Last second, gravity just pulled it out. Okay, well, we'll go through the full routine here. As you should, don't want to take any birdie putt for granted. Want to make sure that focus is right where it needs to be. You got the feels that you want. Picks up the disc, blows it off. There it is. And you know, there's on. another interesting little thing that I that now that you mention it, like Michael Johansson used to put this little metal turtle that was a in honor of his father on his disc before every putt. Oh, that's like, right. I've seen little things like that. You know, like a guy like Andrew Marweed with the cookie thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know just <laughs> not too too many guys that I can think of will do something like blow the mini off. Like Gannon Burr puts the chalk bag up every time, you know. That's right. Brad Hammock pulled the shirt up over the shoulder. <laughs> I just think the plastic is very premium. I think it's the quality of plastic. It's unlike any other plastic that you'll find in the industry. It's something I can consistently trust. You're going to want to put multiple discs in your bag. You can only say so much where they have to eventually just try it themselves and see. Already to the 16th, 350-foot uphill par 3. Yes, sir. That turn on the finish again. You can see those staggered trees are going to cause havoc for the disc on the entrance into the green, but pretty wide open and fair once you make it there. Michael Joe first to play. Catches an early tree guarding the area around the elevated pin. And this of note, I think, Philo, the first elevated pin we've seen thus far in the entire championship. I believe you are correct, Grant. Kayla Visca having no problem with this drive. Steve Rico oh, finishes nice. his round on a heater. He gets in there nicely as well. That's two drives in a row for Steve that have come out online. Oh, Dave got niced. He did get nice. That was looking pretty good till that last tree. And as I expected, those guardians were going to cause havoc for a few of these guys just on the numbers alone. You know, when you throw a really nice shot through the woods, it's just a, <laughs> you know, it's a flip of the coin if you're going to hit a late tree on a hole like this. Oh, oh Feldberg from range. <laughs> Again. What you got, Grant? What, what's it like for you having to adjust just once to a basket like this that's markedly different from all the rest? As far as elevation? Yeah, as far as it being, you know, up on a pyramid or in this case up on, uh, up on a stump. Well, all right. So my take on this, especially for the putters that have a pendulum swing, is you're just choosing the, the, the notch out in front of you that matches where the chains are. You're putting your hand in the basket. Uh, and okay. it's the same if you're a spin putter. So it's really about it. This game is hand-eye, isn't it? Is it not? This is a hand-eye sport. you got to put your hand where your eyes are looking. It's obviously putting up the hill. you got to put your hand in the basket as you swing We've had some short par fours. We've had some long par threes today. This is one of the latter, 390 foot par three to a well-guarded green. Indeed, obviously that right turn finish at the end, so difficult for the righty backhand to get a disc to continue to taper to the right. Just trying to give himself a look right around circle's edge. Kayla Visca, clean drive. Philo, you might have to throw a disc on this hole it might be the only time you throw it all year. That's true. You know, you're going to need something really fast and pretty understable to make that <laughs> final right kind of slide, if you will. 
lot of trust. Obviously, that road over there looming to the right. If you get a little Yankee, don't want to go there. Michael Joe also having a hard time committing to that full turnover. Dry up a bit short. There we go. Felberg got that one moving, but loses elevation in a hurry. Kind of bumping, running out there into circle two. Oh, Michael Joe. Joe from range nearly cashes that one. Oh, it's such a delight watching these these guys play. Kale Visca. There we go. He doesn't Dr. need chains. Smooth. Doesn't need chains on that one. Hardly a chain. That was a whole lot of nub. <laughs> Nub love there for Kale LaVisca. <laughs> He'll take that birdie. And under Schenkenstein, Grant writes down Nub love. Steve Rico nearly finds the line. It's looking good. Par coming up there for Felberg. Rico, Johansson. A nice lengthy birdie putt there from Kale LaVisca. Gets him back into that tie with Michael Joe. Wow, just like that, to the 18th. A par four finishing hole here at Thorpe Park, 500 feet even. Yeah, I can't believe how fast these guys are cooking through this course, man. They are just running and gunning. They are blowing through this 18 holes. Kale Visca on the box. Ooh, get sneaky there. Finishes out to the left for LaVisca. We'll check the angles on the approach. The 18th plane is the second easiest to par on the day. All four of these guys know it's it's a must birdie. Absolutely. All these guys want to finish up this round strong. I'm sure they've probably had a decent idea of what the number to set today was going to be. I know a couple of them are feeling like they're off that pace, so they want to grab this last birdie of the day and have a little bit of momentum rolling into round number three. Feldberg, his final drive of the day. Philo, would you be surprised to see Eagles when they come back here for their second go? On this, on this hole in particular? Uh, on the uh, entire course. There's I, definitely a couple of Eagles out there for these guys. This is seeming to be one of them if they can get the drive clean through all those trees. 500 feet is definitely not out of their reach for two solid plays. A 450 plus drive with a downhill grade and a 50 foot eagle putt is definitely out there for them. Obviously, a couple of those other short par fours right around the 400 foot range. Oh, they can get off the tee clean on those. They could be well within circle one for an eagle putt. So we'll just have to see where the round takes these guys and how aggressive they want to play this course. Everybody giving this a run for Eagle Felberg just barely misses that. Uh, birdies aren't bad here on 18. Exactly what the recipe was for all of these competitors. Try to get this final hole birdie. Snag a little mo, getting ready for the halfway point of this tournament tomorrow. Hot round of the day here at Thorpe Park. Eight under par. We got to see a couple of those eight under par efforts here with our lead card. Kayla Visco overcoming a slow star and a birdie, or excuse me, that's a bogey early in his back nine as well. And there it is. Michael Joe, Kayla LaVisca both back. Tomorrow, Joe Revere back onto the lead card and Joshua Anthon rounding out tomorrow's foursome from Flagstaff.